so hi everybody um, I'm up at the allotment today and wanted to just talk to you a bit about perennial weeds and how we can work with them um, so I've got a number of weeds on this allotment which if I let them would just take over everything I've got bindweed I've got uh, brambles and hogweed and uh, nettles and um, the nettles uh, of course I love and uh, just keep them at the edges um, and all of those weeds really I'm trying to get out of the growing areas so my issue with the weeds is not to try and get rid of them altogether but I do want to move them from the places where I want to grow stuff otherwise I'd never grow anything. So, um, because I want to avoid digging the soil as much as possible, the way that I've done that on this whole allotment is by using uh, a light excluding mulch on the soil for um, up to a year to kill off or set back the weeds underneath. And so today I'm just taking off some of that mulch so that you can see what's going on in the soil underneath. So on this bed here, for the best part of the year, we've had this black plastic down. Now, as Tom pointed out to me at the weekend, you don't want black plastic on your beds for a long time because um, they'll, they, um, the, the water won't go through them, so the soil will dry out and um, they heat up underneath and it's not great for soil life. Um, but in the short term, that can provide uh, a mulch which is useful to kill off these weeds. So we're taking this up after nine months of the year. I'm just having a look at the been covered with straw and that's so it doesn't break up um, and it does mean that I can then use it again if I need to elsewhere. So if you look um, at the soil under here um, it actually is absolutely alive. You've got red ants, wood lice, beetles and I can't see any worms in here but there's plenty of worm casts. There's been a lot of action in here. So this bed looked like this when I put this on. So it was really um, full of living things. Um, and as you can see now, it largely looks like soil. And because the worms have been so busy, the soil is actually amazing. Um, and because it's been such a wet year, this has actually been really, it's been really beneficial to have this um, black plastic on, which has excluded some of the water from the bed. Um, because this is now much less soggy than the, uh, the beds that haven't been covered for the winter. But what I really wanted to point out to you that's really helpful about this method is that the weeds with the long roots that go out in the, in the soil, when you cover them with black plastic like this, the roots come up to the surface. There you go, that is a bindweed root. I've just literally picked that off the surface. Um, this is nettle here, so that will need me to dig it a little bit to get it out. But it makes it very, very much easier to clear the weeds if you cover the soil with this um, light suppressing mulch for a year or so. So if you've got a really weedy patch, rather than trying to get all those weeds out or work or trying to grow around them, which inevitably won't work, um, this is a great way. Wait for a year, cover it for a year, and then you'll end up with something like this, which is much more workable. Okay, so just a, a word about uh, these black plastic mulches. So if you're not using waste black plastic like I've shown you before, you can find or buy this membrane, which has the advantage of the fact that it will let the water through. Um, so it's better for the soil in that way but I just wanted to 
just show people what happens if you leave it down <laughs> too long. So basically I inherited this allotment covered in this stuff. Docks and grass were growing through it because the, coal, the holes do mean things can come through. And you try to take it up and it shreds like this. And I'm really concerned about um, the birds coming and taking this and, and swallowing it. So um, it's just a word of warning really that if you use this uh, weed suppressing membrane, you need to take it up um, within a year so that it doesn't start breaking down and shredding and the plants don't start coming through. Okay, so lastly I just wanted to show you my garlic, which is coming up, which is very exciting. Um, I was hoping today to be able to plant, to sow the parsnip seeds, but the ground is too wet. So I'm going to leave it another week or two before I get sowing seeds in here. Um, but this is my um, winter garlic, which actually went in quite late, went in quite close to the winter solstice. And um, as you can see, it's all coming up looking very healthy. And then last week, in the rest of this bed here, I planted my spring um, garlic, so quite a lot of it. I'm trying to make sure that we don't have to buy any garlic. Um, uh, you can't see it because the garlic cloves actually you have to bury them in the soil and they should come up in the next few weeks. If anybody wants some garlic to sow in their garden now, I pressed the wrong button when I bought mine and uh, I ordered 15 cloves instead of five. So I've got nine no, bulbs. So I've got nine bulbs of garlic in my fridge. So come and see me and get some garlic if you've got a bed prepared. And if you get it in now, you need to get it in before the spring equinox. If you get it in now, then you should get a nice garlic crop at the end of the summer. So we're here in the greenhouse, just looking at the seeds that we sowed last week. And we've got uh, lettuce seedlings germinated. Mizuna seedlings germinated and we're just seeing very first germination of the leeks and we've got a pea in here and the very first sign of her broad bean so it's been a gorgeous sunny day and it's actually felt like spring and I hope you all feel inspired to get in the garden <laughs>